Hi. So this whole week we've been going over wellness group wellness plans. It's a very big topic. So this is the fourth day. Today, I'm going to be going over assessments and there's going to be a slight review on topics. So let's get right into it. Okay, so here uh, we are going to review group wellness. Today, we're going to hone in on details on assessment because wellness is such a big topic. It can be very overwhelming, especially if it's your first time looking at it. Where do you start? What do you start on? What are your initiatives? And we're going to go through an assessment process and, and explain the assessment process so that you can choose what your initiatives are going to be. So on Monday, we went through and we defined wellness. We talked about the wellness wheel, that there's several different areas of wellness to focus on, such as financial and spiritual, emotional, and so on. And then we went through several studies. So if you're interested in a study uh, section, you're going to want to go back to Monday's presentation. Then on Tuesday, we went and talked about the employee experience and why the employee experience is so important. A lot of employees are leaving. It's called the great resignation. And part of that is employees are wanting a better experience is uh, in that presentation. And that was on Tuesday. Okay. So on then yesterday, we went over some of these statistics on family friendly benefits and about the great resignation. And we defined the great resignation on Wednesday. We also talked about building a strong foundation, which is going to be the starting point for my presentation today. Um, yesterday, we talked about how a strong foundation is built for a positive employee. How do you improve your employee's experience as an employee with your organization by starting with the foundation? And we talked about uh, anxiety and how prevalent that is in today's environment. These are just some, I'm just kind of breezing through some of these slides to get you up to date on what we've covered so far. And we also talked about how many firms are offering wellness programs and what that means. What are they offering? Are they offering coaching? Are they offering biometric screenings? Are they offering smoking cessation, uh, mental health benefits, and so on? So today we're going to be focusing on the assessment portion. In my opinion, this is probably one of the most important processes in the whole gamut of uh, processes that I do. So, however, with that said, if you don't have this strong foundation, you need to work on this first. This is the most important thing. If your employees don't trust you, you need to do some self-reflecting and figure out why the trust has been broken between the employer and the employees and really work on that culture. Now, wellness can be a component of that. However, there may be other areas that you want to do first, if that's the case. Uh, so really diving into why the relationship with the between the employee and the employer is not as good as it could be. Uh, if an employee trusts an employer, if there is a misinterpretation, if there is a misunderstanding, they will be more likely to give you the benefit of the doubt, right? There's less likely to have lawyers involved and all the things uh, that come along with that. And actions speak louder than words in building trust. So when the employer says they're gonna deliver on some action items and that's consistently not followed through on, it erodes on trust. Explain why you're giving an employee a task or explain why you're making a change. Taking that time to explain the why rather than just delegating and saying, I need you to do this by X date. If the employee is not told why, it can erode on, on the trust as well. 
take time to listen. Again, these are, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. I'm not here to teach you anything. I'm here to remind you, you know, this stuff, uh, this isn't breaking news. These are all things that we know intuitively. It's just being reminded and checking in. A lot of times we need reminders to do these things, to have these best practices. So listen, reflect, reflective listening works really well. Avoiding assumptions, summarizing conversations, asking the employee to summarize what their understanding was of the conversation that you just had with them, documenting it. No differing communication styles. So some employees like written communication, some like videos, some like pictures. So there's all different kinds, right? Feedback. So offering constructive criticism. So criticism, there's a very negative connotation with the word criticism and a very more positive association with the word feedback. So the way to give feedback is to give a compliment. I see you're working really hard on this task. We're so grateful to have you. You're such a hard worker. I have learned to do it. I, I have learned that if I also add this to what you're doing now, or if I do this part in this other way, I save a ton of time. Do you want me to show you how to, how I've done that and how I've saved time? You know, just making it a teachable moment, offer a solution, look at what the person, look at the person giving direction and, and see if they can do better in giving that direction. So if a task was completed late or a task was completed without a certain level of detail or even done wrong, it may be the direction that was given to the employee. The, the employee may not have had clear enough direction. So making sure that the management look at that as well, not just always go to blaming the employee. You know about me and my water. If you've watched me at all, I talk a lot. So my, my voice tends to get hoarse. So I have to um, give you some ASMR here. Uh-oh, I don't want to be slurping. Everybody's going to turn me off. Look at training opportunities. Again, look at the feedback or the error as a training opportunity and education. That might be some of the reason why the employee didn't complete the task correctly. So maybe they didn't have adequate training. They needed more training. They needed more confidence in that skill. Teachable moments rather than reprimanding. You didn't do this. You're da 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 da, -da reprimanding. Probably not going to go over it very well. Now, probably not going to build trust. Okay, communication and comparison of wellness to marketing. Okay. So one area that I see uh, some errors in is the communication around the wellness program. So you may already have some wellness components in your plan right now. Uh, one, do you even know if it's there, right? Maybe it's your insurance carrier offers it and you don't even know it's there and you're not taking advantage of it. So look at what you have already and communicate, work on communicating what you have uh, first before adding on all this other stuff, right? Because many employers do not look at their benefits and their wellness as a marketing strategy. You're marketing to your employees. You're selling this dream, the vacation, as they say, to the employees. So you want to highlight how all the wonderful things about the plan that you already have or any kind of smoking cessation, any kind of mental health benefits that are associated with your plan. You want to make sure that the employees completely understand the plans that they have now. It shows in study after study that the better educated an employee population is on their benefits, the higher the satisfaction is. You can even have a, I need to find that graph. There's a graph that shows four quadrants and there's a quadrant for less expensive benefits, benefits below the benchmark and high communication. The employee satisfaction rate is like 78% versus Above average benefits and fabulous communication is like 85%. You know, so it's very pretty high, even if you have below average benefits, if you're communicating those benefits very well and employees know what to expect when they do use them, the satisfaction rate goes up. So educating, communicating, 
And if you are rolling out a new wellness program, you want to make sure that it's not an email, like one email in the beginning of launching the program. And it's a memo. You say, yay, we have a wellness program, sign up here, click the link. And that's it, right? You're going to have to roll out several communications, different types of communications, different places, just like you would in a marketing campaign, similar to a marketing campaign. So examples of communication types, there's written communication, such as memos and emails, emails, texts, uh, posting on the internet, mail, snail mail, right? So the wife gets it or the spouse gets it, right? Sometimes the employee isn't the one really making the decisions about the insurance in the household, (laughs) Maybe that employee is ignoring uh, that portion of the plan and getting it in snail mail is going to get to the person in the household that handles that. Social media, putting it on uh, social media in some way is another way that that you can get the message across, okay? Uh, Maybe you have a, a private face group Uh, Facebook group for your staff or other uh, communications on social media. Social communication, oral communication, such as speaking with another person is another way to communicate. Nonverbal communication, such as nodding to show you understand, listening skills, including active listening. Okay. So these are different communication types. Impact uh, and figuring out how to get these types of communications into your rollout of the wellness plan. Impact of clear, confident communication. Clear, confident communication is proactive. It increases employee engagement. It increases productivity. It improves relationships. It it improves culture. It improves employee satisfaction. And there's less fear and more creativity and innovation among companies that have clear and confident communications with their employees. And a wellness plan and a well-communicated employee benefits plan is a wonderful opportunity to improve this. So there's interpretation and then there's meaning. So what happens in communication is a person starts communicating with another person And they have, the person that is communicating has a specific intention and a specific meaning to what they are saying. However, the person receiving that communication has an interpretation of what you're saying and how you're saying it. And the interpretation of what you're saying and how you're saying it may, the meaning may not be conveyed, right? There may be a misunderstanding between the two. So a way to avoid misunderstanding or misinterpretation of your meaning behind what you're saying is reflective listening. So repeating back what you hear an employee saying is a wonderful way of of doing this. Repeating and summarizing before you conclude the conversation, starting with a written communication, then going and calling the employee or doing some sort of a Zoom call to confirm in spoken word either face-to-face, over Zoom, over the phone, and then a final follow-up after that interaction with a written communication, okay? So these are all wonderful practices to have in your day-to-day and also with your employee benefits and implementing new initiatives. Okay, using marketing campaign process to launch wellness initiatives program. So define what it is right? What is the purpose of the campaign or the initiative, the wellness initiative, writing that all down pen to paper? What are the channels of communication available? What tools you have? Like a channel would be YouTube. It was one. Facebook, Instagram, email, um, letters, snail mail, postcards, Intranet, your intranet, posting, uh, payroll stuffers, write down all the ways that you communicate with your employees. And you need to use all of those 
channels to have the best outcome with communicating a new initiative with your employees or a new program. What channels are you committed to using for this initiative? So first write down them all, write them all down and then commit to at least three. What metrics will be used to measure success? So what does it mean to have a successful wellness program? And how are you going to measure that? Is it going to be having an employee anonymous, anonymous survey with your staff on their satisfaction and engagement before the wellness program and then another one after? a certain amount of time, maybe after six months, is it going to be biometric screenings? Are you going to evaluate the overall health of your, of your program? Is it going to be a set number of participants that's going to determine the success? We want at least 20%. If you have 20% engagement in the wellness program, is that going to be a success? So trying to define what is going to define your success before you start will improve uh, your experience with this. What are the key dates and milestones and deadlines? You're gonna wanna work with the experts behind the wellness initiatives to come up with timelines, key dates and milestones for your initiative. Communication development, write out written communications for each stage. So even if it's just an outline or a rough template you want to communicate with the employees at every, all of the key dates and all of the milestones. Okay. And you want to have some sort of a communication around each of those and a countdown, some sort of a countdown to the, the release date. Look at developing countdowns for enrollment, either in the wellness or other, other initiatives that you have. This could be applied to many other categories, not just wellness programs have tone and written communications mapped out ahead of time. So making sure that you have, you're in the right mental space when you're writing or communicating with the employees. People are very smart, intuitive, and intelligent. They will interpret your tone. Are you being sincere? Are you having a bad day? Did you have a fight with your spouse the day before? Uh, do you really care? Is, is the person writing, the person that's writing the emails to your employees, do they really care if your employees enroll? I've seen uh, where someone might be assigned to write the email within an organization and that employee does not have any excitement around the wellness program or the benefits. So it comes across in the communications of the program. Each milestone, so you want each milestone, some sort of a communication going out. What are the deliverables, deliverables going to be with the employees? When is your enrollment? That might be, when is your open enrollment? That might be a critical component as well. Some people want to have the implementation of a new program align with their open enrollment. Others want it to offset. There are positives and negatives to both. And follow-ups. What are the follow-ups going to be? Is it just going to be implemented and drop, then everything drops, all the communications drop? How often are you going to communicate regarding the wellness program after the implementation is over? How are you going to introduce this program to new hires? What's your onboarding process surrounding new hires? Allow for tweaks and updates as the project progresses, but get the basics ready and scheduled. So what I mean by that is when you know the milestones and the key dates and you're writing a rough draft for the communications around this initiative, it's not set in stone. Just know that you know, it could be a rough draft to just have something ready to go and a date stamped and something in your calendar to remind you to do it um, so that you have an idea to go off of. What, what are you trying to communicate in that email or that communication? And right, and before it goes out, give yourself some time to read through it, have others review it, and then send it out. Okay. 
Implementation, communicate with experts on a regular basis, respond to inquiry from implementation team in a timely manner. So these are all commitments that we need during the implementation process. So responding to your team of experts uh, on a consistent and regular basis, finalizing de deliverables to the employees. There's going to be a person assigned within your staff to approve all the deliverables and make sure you define who those individuals are ahead of time, who's in charge of what uh, category in the project, the scope of the project. Check timeline at each milestones and adjust. So as we have the end in mind, we build the timeline, you back into it, right? And as things progress, maybe somebody gets sick, one of the key decision makers gets sick, and we're not able to meet a certain deadline, there's always going to be adjustments or there are usually some adjustments as we go through this. So just a, a reminder of the stages of a project life cycle. So we've got the initiation phase where we go through understanding goals and objectives, deadlines, and so on. Who's responsible for what? Planning stage, outlining the tasks and assigning a timeline. And execution stage, turning your plan into action and monitoring the project and the performance of the project. Closure stage, analyzing the results and summar summarizing key learnings. Okay. So how? So I call it a brain dump. <laughs> Not the most appealing term, but... It's basically before you start a assessment, a creative project of any kind, part of the creative process has to do with a clear mind. If you don't have a clear mind, if you have a cluttered mind, you're not going to be able to focus and concentrate on the creative endeavor. So for me personally, doing a brain dump before going through a questionnaire is absolutely a best practice, getting all the clutter and the chatter out of your mind. So sitting down for anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes and writing down all of your to do's, all the things that are on your mind and making sure that your head is clear so you can be honest and objective when answering the questionnaire. Okay. So going through the questionnaire, which we really created to help define the values, objectives, and goals of the organization and the team members in the organization, map it out. It's like eating an elephant. Is it an online system for communication? Is it communication strategies? Is it culture, onboarding, wellness programs, benefits, education, an employee survey? Okay. So just a gentle reminder that a very smart gentleman said in life, change is inevitable, in business, change is vital. So we've all been in a huge influx of change and things are not slowing down. As we know, technology evolves faster and faster and faster, and we are all going to be we're all getting used to a changing, a fast-paced work environment. So along with change, we need to have assessments on a regular basis and review initiatives at least once a year, have a, have a once a quarter or something like that. Okay, so here are some initiatives. Mental health, coaching, health questionnaire, screenings, onboarding, Online enrollment, open enrollment, benefits assessment, smoking cessation, education, training, fitness classes, EAP, FSA, HRA, group challenge, wearables and tech, standing desk, just to name a few. So if you're not overwhelmed, you are made of steel. <laughs> All these things can be so overwhelming. 
again, why I broke it up in so many different pieces. So we have to do an assessment. We just have to, we can't do it all at once. And if you don't do an assessment, how do you even know if you're aligning with your, the correct priority? How do you know that you're aligning with the goals and the values of the company and of the managers and the executives of the company? So assessing allows us to prioritize and we have certain categories, uh, workforce retention, culture, benefits, wellness, and online enrollment are some that many employers choose. Are you overwhelmed or overburdened? What do you do when there's a million priorities and you're reevaluating comp every six months, it seems, uh, reevaluating onboarding, you're, you need to do management training because everybody's behind on that. We've got a workforce crisis. I mean, yesterday we just went over the great resignation. So how do we prioritize when everything is important and everything is on fire? We have to assess. We have to take the time to do the assessment. So plan your work and work your plan, Napoleon Hill. You got to do that mind dump and get it all out get it all out and calendar it, all that good time blocking and time management stuff. We have to start there. We have to start with a clean mind. Once we have a clean mind, we can move to the assessment. And I put a little R in there because this, for some reason, this cutout or this picture didn't have an R. So I added one, which I thought was strange because I remembered it being, having an R. So we're all resistant to change. So again, we're in a rapidly changing work environment. Uh, employees are quitting for any kind of work at home, flexible schedule arrangement. And we are here battling within our own minds. We're just resistant to the change. It's so hard to to change and, and get over the old our old ways of doing things. Um, but it's time to just let it go and at least look at the assessment, look at what we can do to align with the company values and initiatives and objectives for the coming year. Okay, so the assessment is all the questions. So this isn't necessarily a complete assessment. It's just an example. Depends on what area we're looking at. Um, but a general assessment is certainly one thing and then a more specific one. Um, but this is the idea of an assessment. Okay. So it's where you, we ask all the questions. Okay. And then we, we build questionnaires as well. So the assessment is all the questions where you sit down with a pen and paper and give yourself a score from one to 10 in each area or initiative. Okay. Are we communicating well? One to 10. Is our onboarding consistent and streamlined? One to 10. Culture trust level within the organization. Okay, on a scale from one to 10, does our staff trust their managers? One to 10. Do our managers trust our staff? One to 10. Do our managers trust each other? Does the E team trust the staff? Does the E-team trust the managers? Flexibility in your work schedule from one to 10. Uh, either schedule for yourself or scheduling for your, your employees, depending on what you're assessing, right? Is compensation appropriate for the roles and the responsibilities of the staff, one to 10? Is benefit offerings optimized for recruitment and retention, one to 10? Advancement opportunities, are they available and are they communicated, one to 10? Are managers adequately trained, one to 10? And is the technology system, software, computers, hardware, software, is it serving us for the needs of our staff, our management, and our E-team, one to 10? So as you look at your scores, 
generally, this gives a nice overview of what your initiatives could be going forward and where to go from here. Generally, we focus on the lower hanging fruit first. So if you scored a one, let's say you scored a one in something. Okay, that might be something to work on. You're not going to go from one to 10 per se, but can we get it to one to five or six? Okay, so you want to be fairly competent in each of these areas. Uh, again, this is just a general assessment to, and are actually my assessments are a lot more, a lot longer than this, but this is just an example of how to do an assessment and how to just do a quick assessment for yourself to clear the clutter in your head. Okay, so you can figure out what you personally can work on. If you can't get your employers to buy into a wellness program, you know, it's not going to happen, or you can't get your employer to make any changes around the benefits, or you can't get your employee, you know, we're here to, I'm here to just empower you to look at that huge list of tasks that you're dealing with and prioritize. Okay. So this is one way to prioritize. Okay. So again, uh, just put a nice little picture here of some technology tools. There's lots of technology tools out there. Uh, a lot of people are confused as to why I put the technology component in a lot of my assessments. Technology is there to improve our lives and make things more efficient. I mean, even just a pen and paper is a technology. So technology can encompass so many different things. If the technology we are using is not serving us, then we need to look at that and figure out. And I put this in here as a reminder that we have access to technology and we may not be using it to its fullest capability. You may have access to programs through vendors and insurance companies and your cell phone that you haven't considered using yet. That may not cost any extra money other than time to learn how to use it and figure out where it best fits into your needs. So I am gonna save the rest until next time. Uh, we've covered quite a bit today. So today was just a brief overview of an assessment talking about the value of an assessment, why we need it. We need to do some sort of an assessment to figure out what the initiatives are so that we can prioritize tasks. As I put here, one initiative at a time is ideal. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for sticking around here till the end. Please like and subscribe comment down below. If there's anyone that you know that would find value in this video, please share it and I will see you tomorrow.